A big question in philosophy is, how do I recognize different instances of something as all belonging to a kind? So take, for instance, dogs who display dogness. Regardless of how scientifically I know a dog's genetic makeup, I have some sense of what dogness is, and I can recognize it when I see it. So when I look at a chihuahua, I recognize it as a dog. When I look at a Great Dane, I recognize it as a dog. Chihuahuas and Great Danes are very different, and yet I can recognize them both as dogs. How? Let's consider our options. In Plato's understanding, there is one truest expression of each kind. He calls it the form. The form exists apart from matter in a kind of ethereal realm. Everything in this world only participates, only shares in those immaterial forms. So when asked, how do we recognize both the Chihuahua and the Great Dane as dogs? Plato might respond something like this. Both participate in the eternal form of dogness, but we can recall that form when we encounter its shadow in the world below. Now, this extreme view we might call radical realism. Universals, like dogness in this case, exist in themselves apart from this world. Before getting to Aristotle and St. Thomas Aquinas, let's describe the other end of the spectrum, a position called nominalism, one associated with a 14th century Franciscan named William of Ockham. In short, and mind you, this is a gross simplification, nominalists hold that nothing real connects the Chihuahua and the Great Dane. They don't share a common nature. As a convention, we refer to them both by the same generic name to organize our speech. So for Occam at the other end of the spectrum, universals exist only logically. Between these two positions is the position of Aristotle and St. Thomas Aquinas. St. Thomas taught that universals do exist but that they exist first in the things themselves. So a form is simply what makes a thing to be what it is. It gives shape and intelligible unity to a thing. So a dog is composed of dog form and matter, with the dog form making it to be a dog and arranging and animating the matter accordingly. Now, these forms also exist in our minds. So when we apprehend a dog, we abstract its form, generating an intentional, or conceptual form of dog in our minds. It's not that my mind becomes a dog in the strict sense, it remains a mind, but rather by interaction with the dog, I formulate a concept of dogness, which now serves as the kind of lens through which I encounter other dogs. So against Plato, St. Thomas insists that the universals are first in the things themselves. Against Occam, that real connections exist among generically similar things, and that we can actually know and name them. For readings, podcasts, and more videos like this, go to Aquinas101.com. While you're there, be sure to sign up for one of our free video courses on Aquinas. And don't forget to like and share with your friends because it matters what you think.